Well, it sure feels good to have the door open. Just ignore the massive piles of snow. Um, the M5 kind of left you guys hanging on the end of that last video. Haha, <laughs> that's right. Anyway, uh, that's back together. I do want to bleed it properly uh, with another person. However, I kind of need to continue moving stuff out of my storage unit, which means I need my utility trailer, which means I need a trailer hitch, which means it's time to put a hitch on the Model S. So the M5 is coming back down after I put the wheels on, of course, and uh, we'll get back to this. But uh, next up is going to be uh, the Tesla. I've actually never been underneath that car, so it should be fun. Oh, finally got it set on the lift. This car has the furthest apart jack points. Oh. She's not happy. Car's too heavy. <laughs> this is a 110 volt lift, so. Does it have a breaker or something? What the, what the, uh, hold on. Oof, there are a lot of fasteners. <laughs> And that is a very aerodynamic underbody, my lord. Pretty solid battery pack. Some high voltage shenanigans in there. I've actually never been under a Model S before. Snow tires are still in one piece after a couple weeks, that's good. This is a fairly similar design to the GL, actually, that we saw a couple weeks ago. Apparently those knuckles are actually hollow. Giant aluminum Brembo caliper. Again, my car does not have air suspension, so regular old strut assembly. Pretty cool though. Um, but anyway, yeah, obviously the focus today is gonna be pulling the rear bumper off, which a bunch of fasteners, not sure what's gonna be in there or even in here so much, but I'll probably have to take a quick gander online just to make sure I don't uh, completely destroy something. And then I'm sure I will have to notch some of this out as well to get that uh, receiver through there. So we'll see. Hmm. Well, skip the middleman, pulled the wheel off. Uh, looks like we've got a thingy here, clip there, clip there, uh, 10 mil, clip, clip, and a 10 mil. And then under here, apparently there's a T25 Torx on either side. So I'll get those. And then just a crap load of 10 mils underneath. And I haven't even gotten as far as to see what's in the trunk opening yet. Well, there's a lot more to undo than I thought. Basically you're dropping the midsection after you uh, pull the diffuser flap things off. And hey, look, it's my power unit. That is a very, very chunky um, motor. Uh, the dual motor car is actually, I don't know if the motors are even twice that big. This takes up most of the space. Uh, anyhow, I'm just going to leave that dangling because there's really no reason not to. Uh, I've got the T25s pulled out of the top corners here. Otherwise, it's all just clips everywhere else. Uh, that one's pulled as well. Uh, and then the next step, we actually have to drop the car down and we have to pull off the lower trunk threshold and the C pillars. And then behind some foil tape, there are two more 10 mils, according to another YouTube video I found. Uh, I'm just telling you so you don't have to go find that same video I did. Um, and then at that point, all we have to do is disconnect the other parking sensors. I believe there are four left. I've already disconnected the side two, and the bumper should come off. So I'm trying to keep my car nice, uh, but there's the fastener. And I just peeled this down. Luckily, it came off okay. There's one on this side too, so whip those bad boys out, and then your bumper should be loose. I gotta say that was a little unpleasant. However, really well designed from a standpoint that all of the parking sensors are actually on a single disconnectable loom over here. So definitely don't bother disconnecting those ahead of time. <laughs> And that's probably the biggest single piece bumper I have ever seen. So anyway, here we've got the uh, crash support, which comes out and goes away. Here are the two holes where the bumper was fastened through. So next up, I'm going to take these what look like 15s or 16s 
and remove them. Well, that's interesting. Um, they actually give you more hardware. I'm guessing this is for the stronger crash beam if you have the optional third row seat, um, since it has, for whatever reason, a different crash beam. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip those off too. Hopefully these are washers, not actually on the car, otherwise these won't be at the right distance apart for the plates on that. Uh, but either way, <laughs> holy crap, this is very, very overbuilt. That's a class one hitch. Obviously, I'm going to use it for things heavier than that, but incredible. This car is from LA. Very clean. However, I'm still going to give all this a shot of rust proof primer. I, I just don't want to take any chances, so I'm going to shoot this up real quick. Now we'll get that other bar with the hitch mounted, and then we'll figure out where we got to make some cuts. Again, just not taking chances, so I got that. All primer down, and uh, now I'm going to mount up this, this hitch. So this, which you probably saw in the previous shot, this is mounted to, I think is rear-facing radar? I don't really know, but I'm nearly positive they want me to mount it right there. And I'm not sponsored by those guys, so go buy this wherever you want. Um, but I'm going to get some nuts and bolts, which hopefully I have here. And I assume came with the hitch, so I should probably try to find that package of crap. Um, but once I've got that mounted, I'm gonna hit this with black and get all the stuff mounted and hit that with black. And then I'm gonna have to figure out exactly how we're gonna hog the bumper out to get this to fit properly. Maybe I can find some pictures online or something, or maybe there's a template and that stuff wherever I put it. <laughs> I don't know, but looking more official. Well, I shit you not, but they want you to use zip ties, which they kindly provided, but that seems a little sketch, so whatever. Guess we'll uh, use the zip ties. <laughs> I'm actually gonna grab a third one for my personal stash and wire this up just a little bit, just so I don't accidentally hit it with trailer chains someday. Uh, and also it did come with a one-to-one -one pattern, so I'm gonna try that. Uh, I'm doing every other for washers. You can do whatever you want. Okay. So other than cutting out the bumper and putting it back on, we are, we're done. This thing, again, is just bananas how overbuilt it is for a class one. I would not hesitate to pull a light car with this except for the receiver. I would have that replaced um, with something with the reinforcement. But other than that, holy God. Uh, well, the tape won't stick the pattern to it, so I just scribed it with my trusty straight pick. Now I'm going to get my angle grinder and cut that thing out. What a nightmare. This is definitely the most involved hitch thing I've ever done. And that includes Mr. Wags. Well, I sure hope that worked, because it's not what you call minimally invasive. But uh, I'm going to try hanging it back on there and wish me luck. Oof. A plus freaking plus to Kurt. That fit like a glove. Oh yeah. So I've got this powered light controller that I actually never wired into the Fiat. Um, I am going to have to try to find some either ignition switched or constant 12 volt wires back here, which is gonna be a little tricky. Uh, the only other DIY I found online the dude just literally ties it in with no uh, relays or anything, which I suppose you could do. Uh, and then the wires you're using here are purple, purple, black, and black. I think, yeah, sorry, purple, purple, green, and black. And on this side, you've got a uh, taupe with uh, brown, or sorry, taupe with black. Man, the subwoofer's big, 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 big. Um, anyway, I'm going to pull this carpet piece completely out with that T25, and I'm going to try to find power at that amp. Okay, so I'm guessing red, white, and probably black, but I'm going to get my uh, multimeter and just see if we have a constant live. If not, I'm going to find something that's ignition in there, I'm pretty confident. Yes, red white is ignition. Uh, red is five volts, which isn't gonna do us any good, so. I did for a uh, stop lamp. Everyone else that's done this has just wired straight into the car with the trailer. I'm like, that seems like a bad idea. 
especially if you get like a short, you know, Minnesota trailers, we tow in the salt and then you just get current running through stuff. So, uh, this is an isolated circuit with relays, so it can't do that. I'm, <laughs> I'm hopeful that it doesn't exhibit any odd behavior. If it does, that red wire is probably not brake, but I'm confident I have the ground, the power, uh, the turn, both turn signals, in fact, done and the taillight. So, uh, hoping for the best. It looks actually okay. I painted friggin' everything just because I don't want it to rust.